Hey Apex Agent, it's Mobius Y here with another video for Mass Effect Andromeda's multiplayer. Hopefully my fellow Canadians enjoyed your Thanksgiving weekend that just went by. That's why this video is technically a day late. I wanted to give everybody else, including myself, the extra day off to enjoy the holiday weekend. So today's two-parter is yet another character build, and we're looking at an oldie but a good... Uh, excuse me, an oldie but a goodie. <laughs> And it is a human infiltrator, an absolute powerhouse of a character. And being an infiltrator, this character is largely defined by its signature power, Tactical Cloak. Now, infiltrators were originally created in Mass Effect to have a combination of combat abilities, like soldier classes, and tech abilities, like engineer classes. And that was the case in the very first Mass Effect, but it wasn't until Mass Effect 2 where the infiltrator class became defined by the tactical cloak signature power and it's been like that in every other mass effect since then and you also got other infiltrators that also have stealth grid which is another cloaking ability but it's largely the those powers that define the infiltrator class Chances are, if you see a character that has Tactical Cloak or Stealth Grid, and they have strictly tech and combat powers, no biotic powers, that basically means that they're an infiltrated character, and they are very, very powerful characters. The reason why Tactical Cloak is so good is because when you cast it, you become invisible, as it says, but you pretty much immediately drop any aggro that enemies have on you, onto your teammates. So if you have teammates playing more supportive and or tanky characters that can definitely take hits far more than you can, it's extremely beneficial because instead of shooting at you, and you'll see it in the gameplay even, instead of shooting at you, they will stop to turn at your teammates and start shooting at them. This gives you plenty of time to escape if you're in a really bad situation or prepare to just quickly kill them and just wipe them off the board. And with the damage bonuses that you get from attacking while cloaked it is very easy to quickly kill anything provided you're using a decent weapon and combining your powers effectively so as always this character build is largely just a bit of a synopsis you can change and tweak this build to suit your specific playstyle and or player needs depending on um, how, just how you how you like to play and I'll uh, offer my suggestions of where you can change things as I go through the skills so the human infiltrators three active skills are sticky grenade tactical cloak and incinerate and its passives are munitions training and combat fitness two very good passives with three pretty decent active powers so we're going to go through the whole list starting with sticky grenade this is probably going to be one of the last powers that you that you level up as you are leveling up this character to great to level 20 as well as unlocking more common character cards if you're still working on that as well uh, it won't be the last power because you'll want it sooner than later um, that falls to incinerate but uh, sticky grenade is extremely powerful the initial base damage is 1100 points of damage that's quite a bit over a four meter radius but you only start off with one power cell so you're pretty limited at the very beginning you only have the one sticky grenade until you rank this up but at rank two you get your first um, power cell capacity increase at rank three you get an additional plus 20 percent damage rank four i went with the extra damage upgrade as opposed to the radius upgrade this gives you another another plus 30 percent damage uh, making the total damage 1650 area damage. You can see it on the lower right-hand side. Really handy to check those out once you select various um, various power upgrades. I chose that over the radius, absolutely, because the radius of 4 meters is good enough where uh, some well-placed sticky grenades or a well-placed sticky grenade can kill multiple enemies that are tightly grouped together very easily rank five i went with the extra power cell capacity it is very nice having more sticky grenades because they are so powerful uh, definitely preferable over the shrapnel damage in my opinion because this is over five seconds it deals another 650 damage that's only an additional 325 damage that's not spectacular uh, it's decent but it takes five seconds for all that damage to apply and you want to kill things more quickly you could probably just do that faster by spamming more grenades and at rank six this is largely personal preference but i went with the plus 65 percent damage versus armor so you get a huge damage bonus 
On top of these 1650 points of damage, you get an additional plus 65% effectiveness against armor. Great for taking down hydras or fiends or destroyers once you have de-shielded them, as well as any sub-bosses like berserkers that also have armor. So Tactical Cloak, this is your go-to power. You are going to be using this power religiously, and this is what makes your character such a powerhouse. This is what defines the Infiltrator. This will pretty much be the second thing you level up. Maybe the first if you don't need combat fitness right away. Uh, Tactical Cloak starts off, you have a 6.5 second duration with a 12 second recharge speed and you get an additional 50% gun and power damage bonus when you attack from Cloak, plus you get an additional 75% melee damage bonus. At rank 2 you get a plus 50% recharge speed, so that drops the recharge speed down to 10 seconds as opposed to 12, which is really nice. At rank 3 you get an extra duration upgrade, plus 25% duration on top of the 6.5 seconds. And rank 4, this is a no-brainer. The recharge speed might sound nice, but trust me, go with the damage bonus. You get an extra 50% power and melee damage bonus, and an extra 40% gun damage bonus. This totals everything up to 90% gun damage bonus, 100% power damage bonus, so it's doing twice the damage what it normally would do, and 125% melee damage bonus. Those are huge damage bonuses. That is the way to go over recharge speed, and I will explain why in just a little bit here. At rank 5, this is largely perfect preference you can go with the plus 20 percent movement speed while cloaked this makes it really good uh, for running objectives like the retrieval objectives where you have to get the item and bring it back to the lz this is super handy for that as well as if you run a very run and gun kind of play style um, i love putting the speed upgrade on when i am playing very run and gun i didn't have it in the gameplay so that's why i stuck with the duration upgrade that actually maxes out your duration to 11 seconds total that is great for doing things like devices uh, devices can be a major pain in the ass objective you have such a limited time to get them done and it's so handy having a long duration tactical cloak of 11 seconds where you have a little bit of time to drop some aggro before you even do the device and you still have enough time left on your cloak to finish the device before your cloak runs out and then at rank 6, you actually have two pretty interesting choices. You've got Combat Cloak. Tactical Cloak remains active briefly after attacking. Damage bonuses remain in effect during this time. So this gives you an extra 2%, or sorry, this gives you an extra 2 seconds of 90% extra gun damage bonus, 100% extra power damage bonus, and 125% extra melee damage bonus. That sounds fantastic. Uh, that's more for uh, people who like to use automatic guns on these characters uh, things like assault rifles or machine pistols or something that just shoots really fast like a piranha uh, shotgun or uh, what's it called a hess shotgun um, that is really handy if you're just going for raw damage output uh, and over an increased duration uh, a bigger damage bonus over a slightly longer period of time that would definitely be your pick it's a really good pick personally i really love the survivability that you get from the escape artist pick uh, melee kills briefly activate Tactical Cloak, but more importantly, the Cloak no longer prevents health and shield regeneration. Normally when you're cloaked, it prevents health and shield regeneration, as it says right here. Employs light bending technology to render the user invisible at the cost of shield and health regeneration. Normally you cannot regenerate your health and shields when you are in Cloak, but by choosing this Escape Artist evolution option, your shields and health will regenerate as you are running away from a very bad situation. And since the duration is 11 seconds with the rank 5 duration upgrade, it will give you quite a bit of your shields and health back before your cloak even wears off. Uh, incinerate, I recommend this being the last power that you upgrade. Uh, it's definitely a handy thing to have, but it's with this particular build, it's more of a utility kind of power as well as uh, um, a fire combo primer. Uh, but the problem is that you can't detonate these combos on your own, so it's largely for ca crowd control, and as I said, utility, um, helping take down armored targets as well. Uh, rank 1, the initial damage is 350, and there's 6 seconds of burning duration for an additional 45 damage per second, so that is approximately 270 additional damage over 6 seconds, I believe it is. Uh, if my math is correct, it gets a 60% armor damage bonus with 12 seconds of recharge time, and this primes enemies for combo detonations. 
your teammates have six seconds to set them off with a detonator power to deal even more damage. At rank two, you get plus 15% recharge speed. That drops the recharge time down to 10 seconds approximately, as you can see in the lower right there. Uh, that's a pretty decent recharge time. Uh, rank three, you get plus 35% all damage to both the initial hit damage and the damage per second of the burning duration. So that gives it a total of 473 initial damage and 61 damage per second over six seconds of burning. So approximately 366 uh, burning damage, so almost as much as the initial hit. Uh, whoops, uh, wrong button. So a uh, pretty decent dam, pretty decent amount of damage. Like I said, nothing super spectacular. Kind of like the, uh, sh it's it's like having twice the shrapnel damage, or, or sorry, twice the damage you would deal from the shrapnel damage on a sticky grenade. And at rank four, um, you have the additional burning damage over time plus burning duration. Um, so that would increase the burning damage. By about another 20 points, giving it up to about 80, 85 damage per second, and giving it another 3 seconds of burning. So, 9 seconds of 80 burning damage is about another, is a total of about 720, 750 total burning damage, but that's over 9 seconds. Um, it, it largely just gives your teammates more time to set off a fire combo, which doesn't really sound as appealing as the radius upgrade this is way better in my opinion gives you more crowd control if you have a small group of de-shielded sub bosses like um well we played against ket in the gameplay so if you have say a ket destined cloaked in with two chosen close by to him this will hit all three of them and cause them to start moving around going ah, i'm burning so it just gives you better crowd control in my opinion as well as uh, has the better potential to set up more fire combos uh, when your teammates use detonator powers on them. So let's go to the passives now. Munitions training. This will probably be the third thing you want to level up. Um, after you level up tactical cloak. Or the fourth thing if you want to level up sticky grenades. Um, before this. Um, a lot of your power comes from your passive ability to deal lots of weapon damage uh, in here. So you get plus 5 weapon damage at rank 1. Rank 2 gives you plus 20 power damage. Uh, plus 20%, sorry. Rank 3, plus 5% weapon damage, plus 10% weapon weight capacity, which is super handy. You can carry slightly heavier guns. If uh, if a certain gun is just barely too heavy and shaving off just a little bit of your recharge speed, this will reduce the weight of it just a little bit. You also get plus 20% weapon damage, which is really nice. Rank 4, uh, definitely go with the plus 8% weapon damage. Try and squeeze out as much weapon damage as possible. This character and character setup are very gun heavy. Uh, rank 5, you definitely want the weapon efficiency. You get the plus 50% weapon reload speed, so your guns will always reload faster, just giving you more uh, damage over time as you shoot your gun as quickly as possible. Plus 25% weapon clip size, that is huge, especially on fully automatic guns. And plus 20% weapon spare ammo, that is also super handy to have. This is just a great evolution to have for gun-emphasized characters. And rank 6, again, this is largely personal preference. The sustained fire is fantastic, uh, just like on the human soldier character. Focusing fire on an enemy target causes them to take more damage from all sources. This is great if you're using fast-firing guns or more automatic weapons like machine pistols and assault rifles or um, th something like an N7 Piranha or a Hess shotgun that you can shoot really quickly. Uh, this gives a debuffing effect as you just dump rounds on enemies, especially bosses and sub-bosses, giving you a maximum defense debuff of 24% um, per shot, 2% debuff. So that's great. Uh, rank 6, Precision, is uh, also a really good option if you use more slower firing weapons. This is what I had selected for the gameplay. Uh, plus 20% weapon headshot and weak point damage bonus, which is great if you can land those weak point kills. Uh, which simply helps you kill enemies much more quickly. Get very used to it. Uh, the infiltrator naturally d kills enemies very, very quickly on its own, but it just does it even more so if you are able to land those headshots. You also get plus 25% weapon accuracy, which is pretty great on things like shotguns or machine pistols, and plus 25% weapon stability, which is again very, really great for fast firing guns, especially assault rifles, as it's easier to keep your shots on target. And then rank four. We've, or sorry, um, excuse me, <laughs> the second passive combat fitness. I only took this to rank four because it gives you your final um, health and damage, um, excuse me, what's the word, uh, health and shields uh, bonuses um, are completely maxed out at rank four. So you've got plus 10% health and shields, 
Maximum health and shields at rank 1. Rank 2, you get plus 30% melee damage. Rank 3, you get plus 15% max health and max shields. And at rank 4, you get plus 25% max health and max shields. Totaling plus 50% max health and max shields and plus 30% melee damage. This gives you a total of... Let's take a look-see here. As soon as it loads, there we go. 755 health and 378 shields. So nothing impressive on the shield side, but the 755 health is quite nice. So that's the layout of these skills. You can copy this exactly as I did if you so choose. Um, as, I, as I showed you here, there's a couple options that I said are largely up to personal preference. Namely, rank 5 of Tactical Cloak. Uh, largely up to personal preference. Uh, rank 6 of Sticky Grenade, totally up to personal preference, whether you're like anti-shield or empty armor. And rank 6 of Munitions Training. This is, again, largely personal preference. Uh, change that as you see fit. Cater it to your specific needs. It does not matter to me. And um, because this is a very gun-heavy character, and because this character does so much damage in such short time span... Uh, there are so many options that you can do for your choice of gun as well as your choice of equipment and booster consumables. For gameplay, I did the Disciple Shotgun. I actually ran the Siphon variant, grade 10. Uh, it's it's fairly powerful, uh, does pretty good damage per shot. It absolutely demolishes people in a couple shots when fired from Tactical Cloak. And the Siphon variant with additional health regen just helps keep you alive. It is absolutely fantastic for that. Um, in, this kind of infiltrator setup is great with shotguns, uh, especially if you like to run and gun a lot. You can use the Ruzad shotgun. It is amazing on this character. You could use more trolley things like the Venom. Um, you can use the Rieger Carbine. The Hash is great if you can fire it off really, really quickly. It does huge damage in a short amount of time. The N7 Piranha is great. The Dawn shotgun would be great. The Venom would probably be pretty good, too, if you are used to the ballistic trajectory of the, um of the projectiles that the Venom fires, that could actually be really powerful. There are just so many options available uh, with this character setup. Uh, you could even use some sniper rifles if you have the exact same setup that I do. You could probably even use the Viper or the Viper S, uh, more preferably the Viper S, uh, or just the old Viper if you're feeling masochistic. Uh, the Widow wouldn't be a bad choice. The Raptor is actually quite good. The Incisor is fairly decent. The Vanquisher is amazing. The Shadow is really good. The Injure is pretty decent. Uh, and the Lanat and the Share uh, are extremely powerful uh, in a single shot when you fire them from Cloak. Uh, the N7 Valiant's not half bad. Uh, the, Kish the Kishok Harpoon Gun, yeah, you could try it out if you're used to it. Um, but like I said, there's, there's a lot of options here. The Hurricane, the Roserad, the Charger or Charger S, the Equalizer, the Hornet, the Sidewinder, if you are really good at firing off those single shot gun, uh, those um, semi-automatic guns, if you can fire off the Sidewinder quickly. Uh, that's a great choice. The Talon is a fantastic choice. Um, pretty much everything except in the pistol category, except for the Phalanx and the Carnifex, because uh, those guns just kind of suck in general. But they are much more tolerable on something like the Human Infiltrator that just does so much gun damage. And Assault Rifles, there's just a huge list of Assault Rifles. You could even use the Avenger or more preferably the Avenger S if you have that unlocked. The Zalkin is not half bad. Uh, the Matic is pretty decent if you can get that single shot fire down. The Cyclone is freaking fantastic. The Thoken is also freaking fantastic. Um... The Revenant is a little bit quirky and will hinder your cooldowns if you don't have it uh, at high grades, uh, but it's it's pretty interesting. Uh, the Halberd's the Halberd's all right. It's like a slightly better Matic. Uh, the Falcon is super trolly and can do a lot of damage. And if you're good with something like the Valkyrie, that's also pretty decent. There's there's just options galore, um, but you largely want to stick. You don't really want to use something like the Revenant, which has a huge magazine, uh, because You'll find that, or the Sonid, for example, I suppose, um, or necessarily the Roserad. The Roserad is quite good uh, on its own, and it's very good on something like the Human Infiltrator, but uh, guns with such large magazines don't work out so well because you'll find that you're cloaking, and then uh, you only get the first few shots off with the cloak damage bonus, and then you would have to basically interrupt your stream of bullets to cloak again. Uh, in order to get the damage bonus going again. So it, they're not as effective. You kind of want to stick to uh, really high damage uh, burst guns. Um, so things like So that's why things like the Thoken and the Cyclone are really good. That's why shotguns are extremely good because they just have really high burst damage. You get in close and blast somebody in the face. It does a shitload of damage. Pardon my French. 
Um, and really high damage guns, uh, sniper rifles like the Ashara are quite good, but you can also use something like uh, a Vanquisher to get off a few shots with a damage bonus, or even a fast firing sniper rifle like the Raptor uh, with the damage bonus from Tactical Cloak. We'll do a huge, huge amount of damage. Um, like I said though, in this gameplay I did the Disciple. Um, whatever guns you pick, if you have a damage barrel mod, put that on, squeeze out every last little ounce of damage you can from your gun. Uh, for a shotgun, I definitely re recommend a smart choke to just make you more effective at longer ranges. Your choice of equipment largely depends on how you spec the character out and what gun you are using. Um, if you are using something like a shotgun, uh, like I did in the gameplay video, I would recommend either a shock trooper upgrade or just a simple uh, shotgun amp to increase the shotgun damage by an addition by just a little bit more. Um, things like that. You could even use stuff like grenade capacity to give yourself another three sticky grenades. If you really love spamming those sticky grenades, you use a lot of ammo packs to refill your grenades. Um, more frequently than I do, for example. Uh, that'll help big time. If you're running something like a pistol, you can definitely equip an expert package to give you better recharge speed on your um, incinerate uh, and a bit better recharge speed on your tactical cloak, although that doesn't necessarily matter, but it'll also give you more pistol damage. Um, like I said, it's dependent on what um, on what gun you're using. You can use a sniper rifle amp if you have a sniper rifle, but if you like going for more survivability, a shield enhancer to increase your maximum shields by an additional 30%, or what I much prefer is the multi-capacitor, which will reduce the shield regeneration delay by an additional 100%. So this borderline guarantees that if you are in a bad situation and you have a cloak ready, you can cloak, drop all your aggro, and run away from that bad situation and leave your cloak on until the timer runs out. It's guaranteed that you'll have your shields have, have started recharging before the cloak breaks. You could probably even do do something like Survivor Loadout um, to increase your maximum shields as well as uh, give your combat powers, so basically your sticky grenades, um, more damage. But uh, there's just oodles of options available for equipment. It, like I said, it depends on your, your play style and what weapon you're using. Uh, boosters, again, depending on your play style and what weapon you're using, uh, do however you like. Once again, I like squeezing out as much damage as possible, so in the gameplay I went with a Disruptor Animal Booster. Uh, which is super handy to have, and a shotgun rail amp. Just trying to squeeze out as much damage from that Disciple as possible. Um, you could definitely go with something like an ammo capacity mod if you are using a gun that just fires an absolute hose of bullets if it just shoots super fast like a hurricane, or if it's a low-grade gun that doesn't have a lot of spare ammo yet, you could use that. Um, if you need more survivability, a Cyclonic mod is always a good choice to go with. And power mods... Not really anything that you can use here aside from maybe a combat power amp or a universal power amp to increase the damage of your incinerate and your sticky grenade. I wouldn't really recommend worrying, uh, worrying too much about increasing the damage of your sticky grenade, so you, you would probably want to get more use out of something like a power capacity mod to give you more sticky grenades to play with, uh, which is definitely a heck of a lot more fun. Or you can always fall back to experience enhancers if you're still leveling up this character. But uh, as I said uh, in the gameplay, I'll be using a shotgun rail ramp and disruptor ammo with the Disciple Siphon variant and a shock trooper upgrade for equipment. This gives me more shotgun damage and an extra grenade to carry with me. So that'll sum it up for the character build. This video was definitely longer than I intended. I apologize for that. Uh, went into a little detail about a few things, uh, why I like my personal preferences, as well as just describing um, how you want to use alternative choices. There's definitely alternatives um, to to this specific build. You don't have to copy it exactly. Like I said, none of these builds are uh, necessarily a guide where I basically am telling you this is how you have to set up the character every time, otherwise you're ineffective, blah, blah, blah. I will never do that. I'll simply give you... Um, I'll simply give you an effective build to use, and you can tweak it as you see fit. Uh, I'll simply leave that up to you. But uh, this concludes part one of the Human Infiltrator um, character build guide so if you enjoyed the video and you would like to see this in action there will be a link in the description below to a game on gold difficulty with this exact character and this very setup that i used right here um but if you if that's it for you if you felt this video was simply too long and you're tired of listening to me talk <laughs> i really appreciate you watching as i said hopefully my canadian brethren enjoyed thanksgiving weekend that just went past if you would like to see more mass effect content from me mobius why feel free to subscribe to the channel and click your notifications on i try to upload every tuesday morning 
uh, for Mass Effect Andromeda multiplayer videos. Uh, feel free to like and comment below as well if you enjoyed watching this video. In the meantime, this has been Mobius Y for Mass Effect Andromeda multiplayer. Thank you very much for watching, and I hope to see you on the battlefield or in my next video. Good luck, Apex Agents.